you bring up a very thought provoking point. The idea of putting together our plate, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, we eat in excess. It seems as if we are in excess of calories in general. Of those calories, typically the excess calories comes from carbohydrates and fats. But the safety, if we, and obviously we don't eat individual macronutrients. We don't just say, I'm going to have a bag of fat today or a bag of amino acids. Well, some people do, which we're going to get to, or a bag <laughs> of, of carbohydrates. We eat foods. The three of those macronutrients do not affect the body the same way. And here's where I'm going with this. And I'd, I'd love your thoughts. When we overeat carbohydrates and we're eating 300 grams of carbohydrates, we know what happens to the body. Presumably, let's say this person is sedentary and they're eating 300 grams of carbohydrates at a meal or I don't know, a 150 twice a day, a breakfast for dessert, however you want to play that. There are metabolic consequences. These metabolic consequences include elevated levels of insulin, elevated levels of glucose in the short term, in the immediate. If someone were to eat 300 grams of protein, let's say you split it up between 150, 150, again, sounds like a lot. The metabolic consequences of that, if you were to say from a patient outcome perspective or lifestyle perspective, and our outcomes, broadly speaking, are health, and, and one could pick whatever is meaningful to them, you would not see the same negative effect. And even, and I would love for you to touch on this, and I'm going to throw one more expected macronutrient in there, fat. I would love your take on just conceptually that. You and I always talk about the macronutrients is you need to make a protein decision first. And that protein decision can be you know, based on your personal culture or values or whatever, or your goals. It doesn't matter if you want a low protein diet or a high protein diet. But once you make that decision, that determines a lot about foods. So that determines a lot, a lot about nutrients. Once you make that decision and you decide on your exercise and your lifestyle, now you have to make a macronutrient decision. We've had a 50 year period that has said, well, fat's bad for you. You should eat more carbs. The evidence for that was really bad. Where did the 30% fat in the diet come from? That was just made up in a committee room. Where did the 10% saturated fat come from? That was just made up number in a committee room. And there's no evidence to back that. But what we've done is distort the American diet toward grain carbohydrates. We got, we had a food guide pyramid that said, well, you should eat at the bottom. You should eat all these grains. And that's what Americans did. We got, you know, cookies with no fat. We got cookies that were nothing but sugar and things like that. And Americans were eating 16 servings a day out of that or more out of that bottom rung of the pyramid. In 2010, we got rid of the food guide pyramid because people recognized what it did to the American diet was to dilute the nutrient density and make people eat more calories to get the vitamins, minerals, and amino acids that they needed. So we know, and we've now had 30 years of keto diets that we know have an impact. They certainly have an impact on type 2 diabetes. So, you know, it's time that we recognize that your choice between carbohydrates and fats is a fuel choice. Carbohydrates are actually the most risky of the fuels. And you probably need to tailor that fairly precisely to your muscle needs. Fat is actually the safest of the fuel needs, and that should round out your calories. So that's the way I always think about it. Make your protein decision. That's a, that's a major part of your nutrient decisions and where you're going to get your nutrients. Make a carbohydrate decision based on your muscle needs for physical activity. And then the rest of your calories really come from fat. Uh, and you can also use protein to fill that in if you uh, want to go higher. I think a lot of people who are choosing a gram of protein per pound are actually choosing it to avoid carbohydrates. I think that's a legitimate reason to do it. It has nothing to do with protein turnover, but it has everything to do with body metabolism. And I think that's a legitimate reason. The reason I asked this question is because in, on one hand, I think that we are seeing the protein conversation 
getting a lot of pushback. We are seeing the New York Times, you know, we did an interview for the New York Times, Vanity Fair, you name it, people are coming down hard on the increase in protein discussion. That becomes thought provoking because if we were to say, wait a second, if you look at carbohydrates the same way, the conversation would be different, just even from a, a metabolic perspective. Here is a macronutrient that you could arguably safely overconsume. It does not have the metabolic derangement associated with carbohydrates. Yet, as I hear, you know, professors or and doctors talk about how our diet is wrong and that we can stop stressing about dietary protein, I, I have to say I, I disagree. And the reason is, is because we don't fundamentally understand the big picture of, of how we should be eating and the importance of each macronutrient. And that, what do I mean by this is that we have been over consuming carbohydrates for decades. 74% of us are either overweight or obese. We are eating a ultra processed, high caloric dense diet. And as we begin to have these messengers say, we are stressing too much about protein, it further distorts the message. And I, I do have concerns about that. Hopefully I'm, I'm making this clear. Let's say someone ate 300 grams of fat and they were in a ketogenic diet and their carbohydrates were controlled. They probably would have a better metabolic pro uh, profile than someone who is overeating 300 grams of carbohydrates. So this is what I'm trying to do to concisely say with these different macronutrients, we have this conversation and group of people that are demonizing protein, telling us that we don't need to be quote, stressing about it and saying all of these different things. And yet we have a population that is grossly metabolically unhealthy. The, the idea that people are stressing about it um, for me, I interpret that as meaning while well, they're going out and buying all kinds of weird things and protein bars or shakes or free amino acids or all. And I don't, I don't really recommend any of that. Um, but I think that we do need to make a protein first decision. We need to understand what that decision means. What we know is that the food guide pyramid, which said the worst thing in the world is to eat animal foods. Uh, because of cholesterol and saturated fat was totally wrong. That information was totally biased and totally made up. And so what we did was distort the American diet by diluting the nutrient quantity with carbohydrates, with grains. And that caused people to eat more calories. We know from a variety of research, one of which is referred to as the protein leverage hypothesis, that all animals, all humans, all people tend to eat toward a protein target. We, we're eating toward a certain amount of protein, maybe 16, 17% of our calories, maybe up to 20%. Uh, that seems to be pretty consistent. But when you fake people out with what are called ultra processed foods, foods where we are diluting the nutrient quality with carbohydrates, with grain products, now we have faked out the satiety system. Protein is the most satiating of all proteins. We, we, we get lost talking about protein and lean body mass or protein and, and muscle mass, but we forget that protein has a very high thermogenic effect. Protein has a very high satiety effect. Protein is metabolized to carbohydrates in a very slower. There's a lot of metabolic outcomes that are very beneficial with protein that aren't true of any other nutrient. And so I think stressing out isn't the right term. I would just say, I think it's time we shift back to being protein conscious. You know, when I was a child growing up on a farm in the Midwest, you know, we were very protein conscious, you know, protein was a central part of our meal. And then we sort of shifted away where we kind of got to a point where we treated protein as a garnish. You know, we would have big bowl of pasta with a little bit of meat sauce and refer to that as protein. Uh, you know, I think that's where we lost the track. We need to be protein focused with a logical concept of what we're achieving nutritionally.